Hello and welcome. I'm Tom Copeland. I'm a trainer, author, and advocate for the business side of childcare. This video will talk about the tax implications of the child care stabilization grants. We're going to look at the benefits of the grants first, and then we'll explain the tax consequences. I'm an attorney, and I'm happy to try to answer your questions after you've listened to this. Here is my email address. I don't charge anything for answering questions. Your question might be answered on my website, tomcopelandblog.com, where I've posted hundreds of articles on all aspects of the business side of childcare, including articles about the stabilization grants. I'm on Facebook. Every time I post something on my website, it will appear on Facebook, and you can ask me questions on Facebook. I'm not preparing your taxes. If you need professional assistance, you should seek that out. So let's start with the good news here. Every state, territory, tribe has received millions of dollars for these child care stabilization grants. The purpose of the grants is to provide financial relief to both family child care providers and child care centers to help them cover the business costs associated with COVID-19 and to help stabilize your operations. We want you to stay in business and continue to provide childcare. This represents a substantial financial benefit to all childcare programs. You don't want to lose out on this. It's not a loan, it's a grant. You don't have to pay it back. Now, each state has its own timeline for when they are accepting stabilization grant applications. Many states have already started this process. To find out whether or not your state has begun issuing grants, contact your local Child Care Resource and Referral Agency for the latest news. Or go to this link and see this chart for your state and what the status is. Now, who's eligible to receive these grants? Providers, child care centers must be licensed or registered as of March 11, 2021. You don't have to show a loss to be eligible for this grant. Your program can be a limited liability company, incorporated or a nonprofit organization, and you don't have to have employees to be eligible for this grant. How much will you get? Each state has its own rules about this. Some states will give out a lump sum, others will pay it out monthly over, say, six months. You can receive these grants even if you've received previous grants through your state. This is on top of anything else that you might have gotten. If you're caring for subsidized children or caring, uh, getting money from the food program, you can also get these grants. What can they be used for? A whole variety of things including paying yourself or employees, rent, mortgage payment, utilities, insurance, facility maintenance, COVID supplies, general operating expenses, other goods and services to maintain or resume childcare, mental health supports, professional development, a wide range of things. Now, if you have employees, you can't involuntarily furlough them from the date you apply for the grant through the end of the grant period. You must pay the same in wages and maintain the same benefits if you're offering any benefits. In other words, you can't reduce people's salary. You can fire an employee for cause. They're not showing up. They're violating your rules. An employee is someone for whom you've been withholding federal and state payroll taxes, such as Social Security, Medicare, unemployment taxes. If you have independent contractors and you're issuing a Form 1099, they're not employees, and you can lay those people off. If you are incorporated and you want to spend the money on personnel costs, you must distribute the grant money through the normal payroll process of your company, meaning payroll tax withholding. You can't give this money on the side 
to employees without doing the proper withholding taxes. You can give employees a one-time bonus uh, or raise their pay in general. If you raise their wages, you need to consider the fact that this money is going to run out in 2022 and therefore you should be planning ahead to either continue paying at that higher wage or you would have to consider cutting wages, which would not be a fun thing to do. Now, I want to focus on this concept of paying yourself. Language in most state websites will talk about personnel costs as something you can use this money for. But the rules are clear that if you are a sole proprietor, you're self-employed, you can use part or all of this grant money to pay yourself. And once you pay yourself, you can then use the money for whatever you want. You can use it for personal things. You can use it for business things. So you could fund your retirement. You could take a vacation. You could create an emergency fund. You could reduce your debt. Or you could spend money on items that are not allowed under the grant for your business, such as a major home improvement, adding a deck. Now, once you pay yourself, you're not paying taxes twice. So the grant money comes to you. That's income. But if you then give it to yourself, it's not income again. You're not going to pay taxes twice. Well, obviously, the next question is, well, how do I pay myself? I think there's three ways you can do it. If you have more than one bank account, you could transfer money from one bank account to the next and then label it, make a note somewhere that says, paying myself stabilization grant or write a check to yourself and cash the check and put in the memo line, paying myself stabilization grant. Or leave the money in the same bank account. Maybe you only have one bank account. You can leave it there and just designate the money. You know, on, on July 10th, I got $2,000. Just say July 10th deposit, paying myself stabilization grant. It's really that simple. You're just labeling the money you get as payment for yourself. And that's allowed. That's the easiest way to go. Let's say a few more words about the other things you can use the money for. Rent, mortgage payment, utilities. For these expenses that are both business and personal, you can use your time and space percent if you are a family child care provider to determine how much of these expenses you can use the grant money for. Liability insurance, however, is always 100% deductible, so you can use the grant money for all of business liability insurance. Facility maintenance and improvement, minor renovations, but you can't use it for construction, major renovations, remodeling, removing load-bearing walls, uh, extensive al alterations on your program. Now, some states may clarify this a little bit more about what they mean by it. So you may want to contact your state if you have questions about certain kinds of work that you want to have done with this money. Goods and services, food, any materials you're using with the children to help them learn, child care software, cleaning services, transportation. Mental health support for you, your staff, family engagement to help the parents help children through this hard time. Now, what if you're not sure that how you want to spend the money is going to be allowed? It's not clear to you. And, and the area where this can be confusing, remodeling. Well, what is remodeling? Is that a minor improvement, a major improvement? If I'm just replacing the kitchen countertops, is that minor? If I'm replacing all the kitchen cabinets, is that major? And states are often not going to clarify this. So if there's a question in your mind about this, you're not sure, then I would just su suggest that you take the money and pay yourself. And once you've paid yourself, now you can feel free to use it for whatever you want, even a major home improvement. I think that's the 
safe backup plan if you're not sure that what you want to spend the money on is going to be allowed. You need to keep the records of how you're spending this money in case you're audited. You need to keep the records for at least three years, but some states may require you to save them for a longer period of time. Now let's talk about the tax consequences. Stabilization grants are income. They're taxable income. You may or may not receive a Form 1099 at the end of the year from your state that says how much you got, and that form would also be sent to the IRS, so the IRS would know that you got this money. These grants are treated by you in the same way as getting paid by parents, getting paid by the subsidy program, getting paid by the food program. It's all income. You must report income in the year you receive the money, not the year you spend the money. So maybe you're getting two, three, four thousand dollars in 2021, but another two, three, four thousand dollars in 2022. And you want to use this money for something that's going to uh, apply all this money on in 2022. Well, you received some grant money in 2021, even though you might not have spent it or are not planning to spend it this year. It's still income this year because that's the year you got it. And if you get some income in 2022, you report that income on your 2022 taxes. And then when you're spending this money on items for your business, you can deduct them in the year you spent them. Do you still want this grant? Yes, yes, it's income. So let's not worry about, uh-oh, income taxes, uh, this is a problem. No, it's not a problem. You want the money, even though it might mean that you're going to pay a little bit more in taxes. Even so, you're always going to be better off financially by getting the grant. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, don't take the grant because then your taxes are going up. No, no. If the parents paid you more money, your taxes would go up. You would still want more money from parents. Extra income does mean higher taxes. The tax rate you're going to pay on this grant may be somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. You're paying Social Security tax, you're paying state and federal income tax, and roughly speaking, it could be 30 to 40 percent. Could be less, rarely will it be more. So if you got a $10,000 grant, and had to pay 30% of that in taxes, you'd pay an additional 3,000 in taxes. Oh no, but you're gonna have $7,000 left over. If you're gonna pay the higher rate, 40%, you're gonna pay $4,000 in additional taxes, but you'll still have 6,000 left over. You're always gonna have more money left over. So do you still want the $10,000? Yes, you do. Some people then worry, oh, well, getting this money will push me into a higher tax bracket. And uh-oh, that's going to be a problem because if I get pushed into a higher tax bracket, I'm going to have to pay more taxes on all my other income. And that's wrong. Let's say you're in the 12% tax bracket and the grant you get kicks you up into the next higher bracket of 21%. All this means is the grant money that's above the 12% level gets taxed at 21%. But all the other income you have still gets taxed at the same rate. You're not paying any additional tax on income that's not grant income. So this just means maybe paying a little more in taxes, but you're still financially better off. Some people object to getting the grant because maybe they wouldn't be better off financially if they got these grants. This grant income may or may not disqualify you from receiving Section 8 housing vouchers, Medicaid, health insurance tax credits, or college scholarships. I can't speak to those particular programs 
and how it might affect you. Whether or not you can earn a certain amount of additional income before this becomes a problem with eligibility or it's not a problem at all. You need to check with these agencies to see if there would be any impact on you by getting these grants. Now let's talk about three examples of how you might end up paying some taxes or not with this money. Situation number one, let's say you get $15,000 from the grant. Let's say you use all of it to pay yourself, as I've been talking about. You're going to pay somewhere between 30% tax, 40% tax. Well, at the 30% tax rate of $4,500 in taxes, you'll still have $10,500 left over. If you're paying 40% tax on this, you'll still have $9,000 left over. Consequence number two. You get the $15,000 grant, and as a family child care provider, you spend it on items used by both your business and your family. Shared toys, a computer, television, swing set, business and personal use. Well, you can only use the grant money to pay for the business portion of these items. And let's say then, for the rest, you're paying yourself. And let's just say, that the business portion in your situation is 35%. That's your time space percent of 35%. Well, 15,000 times 35%, you can use $5,250 of the grant money on these expenses. That leaves you with $9,750 that you're paying yourself, and now you gotta pay tax on that. 30% tax, you're gonna have about $6,800 left over in your pocket. 40% tax level, you're going to have a, about $5,800 left over in your pocket. Third situation, you get the $15,000 grant and you use it for items exclusively used by your business. Food, toys, employee wages, COVID supply, children's furniture, equipment, no personal use, exclusively business. Well, you can Use all of that grant money for those items. 15,000 of income minus 15,000 of expenses, you're able to deduct it all of it. You have no taxable income. You have no additional taxes. You wiped the grant income all out. But you're gonna have zero left over in your pocket. So, which of these options is better for you financially? Paying yourself? or buying stuff with the grant money for your business. Financially, you're better off taking all the money for yourself. That'll mean you'll pay more taxes than in the other options, but you'll have more money left over. If you are paying yourself with some or all of this money, and you're gonna pay some more in taxes, you need to be prepared for that. You don't want a big surprise at the end of the year when you're paying your taxes and uh, all this extra income and you didn't set aside money for those taxes. You cannot use the grant money directly for taxes. But once you pay yourself with some or all of that money, you should set aside some of that money for taxes. If you file quarterly estimated taxes, the next time it's due is January 15th, you may want to up increase how much you're uh, paying in quarterly. Your tax rate's gonna vary depending on your family's situation. You'll always owe at least about 15% of this money you pay yourself in Social Security and Medicare taxes. And depending on your circumstances, a certain amount of federal and state income tax. So conservatively, I would set aside 30% of any money you pay yourself in anticipation that you're gonna owe that in taxes. How should you spend this grant money? If you need to improve the quality of your program, then it's worthwhile to use this money for that purpose. You need to uh, buy a new carpet 
you need to buy some additional toys. You want to purchase some curriculum. You want to do these things that will help improve the quality of your program. Then I think that's a good use of the money. But I would warn you against spending the money just because you have it. In other words, you're saying, wow, I got 5,000, 10,000, whatever you did. Let's just open up all the toy catalogs that we can possibly find. And let's just order a whole bunch of stuff because look at all the money we have. I just, my opinion, I just don't think it's a good idea to just go on a spending spree unless you absolutely need it. So don't look for things to buy. Saving money is always better than spending it. I think this is a good opportunity, a tremendous opportunity to, impro to improve the financial condition of you and your family. Are you contributing to your retirement? Are you paying off debt? Are you saving money for an emergency fund? And so on. These are critical things that could help stabilize your personal finances so that it can help you weather the next financial storm that may happen down the road. Now, if you want additional information that describes in detail the federal guidelines for this program, here is the link. Let's summarize. You want this money. If it's now available to you, apply. If it's not yet available to you, watch for when it is. Take the money. It's a lot of money. This is an unusual situation that can help now your business and your family. Don't hesitate to use part or all of it to pay yourself. It's okay. You can do that. And keep your records for at least three years. That's what I want to have to say. Here's my contact information again. I'm happy to try to answer your questions via email. Go to my website to see updates about this program or follow me on Facebook. This webinar was funded by the Child Care Communications Management Center, funded by the Office of Child Care and the Administration for Children and Families, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and was developed in partnership with the National Center on Early Childhood Quality Assurance, which is funded by the OCC, the Office of Head Start, ACF, and HHS. You can duplicate, you can pass on this video to anyone for non-commercial use, and you don't need permission. Thanks for spending the time listening to this. I hope it was helpful. You work very hard at what you do. I want you to continue to be able to do it, and this grant money can help. Thanks for listening.